Hello and welcome again from Ski Instructor Academy with another bite-sized analysis episode. Today we're looking back into the past of some carving from students in 2013 looking to complete their level three. Um, and here we have uh, the first one. I can't remember, obviously, being 2013, who this may be. Yeah, I think the reason that we're looking back at this is just because we kind of see this a lot on the mountain where you have people flying down, using up the whole width of the piece and also thinking that they're actually doing a carving turn and a lot of the time they're actually not. So we just thought we'll just take a look back in the archives at one of our groups and see what's going on. Yeah, um, what Jamie means by that is um, we often ask a student, um, you know, oh, were you carving down there? And they always will come back, oh, yeah, 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 I was definitely carving. And of course you can clearly see they're not. The, the the tails are overtaking the tips and they're skidding out somewhere. And of course, let's not mistake the idea that what we are talking about here is true carving, like actually clean cut railing, clean small. cut. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with actually drifting the top of the turn and then coming hard onto the edges as we need to do in racing where the gates don't allow you to follow the actual radius of the ski all the time. Yeah, so um, we're basically talking, removing the uh, the steering element of rotation and it's pure edge and pressure. Yeah. So in, in the case of this um, girl going down, uh, yeah, this is not... I wouldn't class this as carving. We can see there's some issues going on. Um, when we look at it in a comparison video, we'll see it more clearly as well. It'll give you a, a better idea of... Uh, there's a clear difference between how we initiate the turn and how I move inside compared with, in her case, you can clearly see she's stood much closer to her outside ski. So to be able to get the angles necessary, that critical edge angle we've talked about on our ski analysis series, it would be very difficult for this girl to achieve this now with her hip. Basically, she stood up over the top of her skis. Yeah, so what we're seeing in the previous podcast, the short term one, was when we asked the question of a picture almost like a similar image to this at the end of a turn is would you call that a short turn or a long term position and in the short turn it looked like a long term position and in this long turn here that looked very much like a short term position that she was in at the end of the arc there where her center of mass is very much stacked up over her feet and obviously when it comes to carving we're trying to get those two points to go away from each other we're trying to get the center of mass to move inside the turn so is this in this case with her, is it a confidence issue? Because the relevant speed for her to be able to carve, she actually, she's got good speed because that's normally what we see the first problem with carving is people don't have the relevant speed that they're breaking and that breaking action just makes it impossible for them to move inside the turn. But she's got enough speed, but is it a confidence issue? Um. Possibly, yeah. I think the psychological element's always present, especially as you start to go through your gears and you start to push yourself and take yourself outside your comfort zone. But um, also, I just think she's quite passive in the turn. A um, bit parky and ridey, but just she just does, she's not constantly flowing with movement, whereas you are. Um, there's just especially moments in the here. turn where she's just sitting on the ski or she just fully extends and uses up all that range of movement in one sudden burst rather than blending it throughout the whole arc. Yeah, this and is, it's in the wrong plane. It's it's a, like a park and ride, isn't it? Where she's done everything there. And then from this point here, all the way through until when does she next do something? Uh, let's have a look. Uh, uh, <laughs> about there, she goes up in the air. So she's not done anything in the whole arc. Obviously, you're doing a very dynamic um, carved turn there. There is obviously stages in between before you get that, you don't just go drift a parallel straight or that's the final no. product of a carved turn. You would follow the natural radius of the ski a little bit more, not influence the arc quite so much. You wouldn't be getting your center of mass as far inside the turn. Um, but she is just, she's very But that she's means being on a, on relatively easy terrain for people. So those that want to start getting better at their skiing, the key trick is not to go on your holiday and tick off how many black runs you're skiing. It's actually look for the good wide open blues where you can get onto a really easy blue to practice this type of stuff. And that, um, it would be my advice to people 
because you, when a blue slope, you don't have to worry about doing that, Jamie. On a blue slope, you can actually go down and stretch the curve and rail the ski easier. Yeah, but it is, as we've said in previous casts, well, if you can't do it on easy terrain, you can't do it on steep terrain. It's just, it's not going to be there. If that skill set's not developed at the easiest level, if you like, it's not going to be there at the highest level. So always start at the at the bottom and build your way up. And there's nothing wrong with being a beginner. You spoke about Ericsson and um, the 10,000 hour kind of uh, thought. Um, and it's definitely true. Um, and most holiday skiers, recreational skiers are beginners because they've done six, 10 weeks. They haven't spent every day for 10 years on snow. Yeah. Um, so the relevance of this video here is to do with psychological element. If you're breaking your psychological tolerance, you feel uncomfortable on a slope trying to go down like, like here, then back off. You're not going to get any better. You're just, you're just going to keep going into survival mode. You need to take it back a few stages and try to feel the, 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 the side cut of the ski starting to work more because this is skidding. Yeah, but I'm sure this lady, I can't remember her name right now, um, was 2013. I'm sure she would have been comfortable on this terrain. We would have skied it many a time before, but maybe it's just not with this performance. So it was kind of, maybe this was just slightly out of our comfort zone. Um, but also it's kind of, it's just getting used to but when that element of speed come in, comes into the turn of not allowing that to override everything else and just focus on that sensation of going fast. It's obviously continuing to move with it. So drills that ski instructors would normally fall back on in, in cases like this, they love to favor things like the J-turn, you know, you can see them wanting to do that, um, trying to do things like um, the, the hip support and push the hips in, using the poles in certain ways. Not my way of doing it. Um, I have a different method. Um, so what's, what's your different method then? Well, we've looked at it before where I've discussed operating with short leg, long leg, mm -hmm. and trying to get them a sensation of removing the block. Because in her case as well, it's quite obvious that she doesn't have the ability to go any further inside because she's actually supported by her inside leg here. And as a result, it's impossible to move your body and hip to the inside. There's something acting as a walking stick. And she is typically what I would say, in balance, too much in balance. And carving's about moving in and out, swinging in and out of balance. Yeah, I do a lot of tipping turns when I'm really, especially with the higher levels of, um, of our kind of level three um, here in Austria, because the guys are so used to over angulating, if you like, and not necessarily skiing from the ground up and really focus on the body coming across. Um, just to get them the sensation of the center of mass really toppling inside the turn. Okay, you're gonna maybe go out of balance, but that's that's the sport as you're trying to find that fine line. Um, you're trying to work with that fine line, sorry, of what balance actually is. Yeah. So there we are, another bite-sized section for you to, uh, when you're having your breakfast in the morning, to listen over. We love to see your comments. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time with Ski Instructor Academy. Later, guys. Thank <laughs> you.